Hi, I'm Angie. I want to welcome you to National Indoor RV Centers, where we specialize in the sales, storage, service, and detailing of only high-end, new, and used coaches. So basically, we do it all. Hi, I'm Angie with National Indoor RV Centers, and today I'm so excited to show you the 2021 Integra Aspire. Now they've added a ton of things to the Aspire this year, one of those things being the 360 camera. So if you look straight up here, just above this gorgeous windshield, you'll see the first camera. I'll point them out as we go along so you can see when you get inside of the dash, you're gonna get a view, well, several views of your coaches, but my favorite is the bird's eye view so you can see everything around your coach. Just one of the things that they've added. I've got a lot more to, t to tell you about though today. The Aspire sits on the Spartan K2 chassis with the Cummins L9 turbocharged 450 horsepower diesel engine with 1,250 foot-pounds of torque. Now, this is a beautiful exterior. This is the poppy exterior color, and I love how Integra does their sea lighting, kind of their accent lights. We like to call them the show-off lights with my customer, um, my Integra customers, and then the backlit Integra. They just make this a beautiful coach coming and going. They use Sickens paint, and you also have diamond shield across your front cap to protect this beautiful front cap. Now, one of the things that I recommend is when you get to your campground, that even with the diamond shield, you go ahead and wash off those bugs and anything that you've, you know, if you've been traveling for a while, because there are certain bugs that will still try to eat through that shield. So you wanna do everything you can to protect your paint. The Aspire comes standard with the external chrome mirrors. So these are internally controlled. You've got defrost, you also have a camera in your mirror so that when you turn on your left or right, right turn signal, you're gonna be able to see down the full length of your coach, which is great for changing lanes, when you're going to turn. Anyway, you'll just be surprised at how easy these are to drive with these great mirrors, the 360 camera, so many things that help make this a pleasurable experience. Then we've got our first LED marker light and we've got the chrome entry handle. I point this out because a lot of coaches at this level don't have that kind of detail. Integra adds the details. We've got the beautiful handle and the touch um, keypad. So you can customize that. So if you're away from your coach, you can give that code to a service tech or to your family member so they can get into your coach when you're not there. Plus, you don't have to remember to take the keys with you. It's one of those problems I have once in a while. So I always like to have the keypad here. Then this is the first of our docking lights for the passenger side of the coach. Docking lights are super important, especially when you're going into campgrounds, when it's dark, really pulling anywhere, parking when it's dark. It's gonna, it's gonna illuminate the area around the bottom of the coach so that you can see not hit rocks, curbs, picnic tables, trees, all those things that can damage your, your coach. Then we've got our fuel fill. This is diesel fuel for uh, dual fill for passenger and driver's side of the coach and a 150 gallon fuel tank. Another way you can open up or get into your coach obviously is your key fob or your key and then the, the uh, customized touch pad here. Now what I like about having the key fob is as you're walking up to your coach, say it's late at night, just for security reasons, if you go ahead and hit the unlock button, it's gonna turn on your porch light. So that will stay on for about 30 seconds and then it will automatically go off. If you want some extra light around your coach when you come walking up at night, you're gonna go ahead and just hit this button right here and it will turn on your docking lights. That way you'll have more lights. Now the docking lights will stay on until you turn them off with this button. The Aspire sits on the Michelin 315 tires in the front and 295s in the rear. Now something that I really think is important with your tires is that you go and watch my retro band video. Retroband is a spare within the tire. It's sold exclusively by National Indoor RV Centers and it will give you great peace of mind as you're traveling down the road with your loved ones. So Integras have the quietest riding, best handling coaches on the market today, period. A couple reasons why. First of all, comes standard in the Aspire independent French suspension. Then we've got the 315 Michelin tires. So we've got a wider tread, more tread on the ground gonna give us a smoother ride. And then to keep it quiet, we've got these flush slide rooms. So you see there's no lip there, nothing to snap or, you know, to catch the wind and make noise. Very small tolerance here. 
So one of the things that I want to remind you, always check your manufacturer's uh, guidelines, but with Integra, they let us know that they want us to bring the slides out while we're at ride height. So when you get to your campground, slides out, jacks down. When you go to leave, jacks up, bring the coach to ride height, slides in. That keeps that box nice and square so that your slide goes right in and you don't have any twisting or torquing after you've leveled your coach and then trying to take your slides in or out. So here at the side of the coach, you can see the beautiful paint job. It's uh, Integra uses Sickens paint and they do full body custom paint work. And again, this is the poppy color. Now I'm sure you want to see that first baggage compartment. But before I go in, the most exciting news, well, I don't know, there's so much exciting for um, 2021 and in the Aspire, but power baggage locks standard, yay. No more going over to each individual door and opening it with the key or locking it. So that's a huge plus for 2021. So here's our first storage compartment. You'll see that they're nicely lined, just like you see in the automotive industry. You've got two 110 outlets and then a 12 volt receptacle. We also have our remote control, a little spot for this, for our awnings. So you have Gerard, dual Gerard integrated awnings, and then you've got the Gerard slide toppers, Gerard window awnings, and Gerard entry door awning as well. So if you want to uh, use your remote to bring out your awnings. I'd like to bring them both out at the same time. So you just go to double zero, you go left to right to change. So one would bring out your front awning, two would bring out your back awning, and again, double zero for both at the same time. Then you just hit the out button. Look how big and beautiful these awnings are. They're gonna give you a lot of shade and they're Gerard, so you just know that they're top of the line. Now, one of the other things I like with these awnings is that you have the LED lights. So I'm gonna pull out my phone here. All you have to do is download the Mira app and then connect your phone to your Vega Touch. So I could bring my slides out and in with this as well, but I wanna to go to my lights. So I'm gonna to go to my exterior lights, my passenger side awning lights, just turn those lights on, driver side lights, my porch light, I'm gonna brighten things up around here. Passenger side security light, and if my slides were out, I could light up underneath the slides, which is nice. All right, so another cool feature on this is the security motion. So when I click that, I've now activated the security portion of my driver side and my passenger side security light. So that way, when I turn that button on at night, if anyone walks by the coach, that light will pop on. To the left of the security light, we have our second 360 camera. You also get the dual pane tinted frameless windows throughout the Aspire. Now that I've got my awnings extended, all I need is some comfy seating around here, and then we can go ahead and watch something entertaining on the TV. We've got this Samsung 43 inch TV with the JBL soundbar. What I love that Integra gives us is that we can tilt this TV way out, direct it away from the sun or towards our guests, and then the best, it tilts. So a lot of times just to get rid of that glare, you just need that little bit of tilt. So I love that they give you this. Now right behind the TV, we've got two 110 outlets and our satellite dish uh, input, receiver input. So you might be wondering what this is. This is for your window awning. So you're just going to thread it through the tab there, pulls down easily, and then you just hook it in to the attachment here on the side of the coach. Now you've got a three point connection for your window awning. Now typically my Gerard awnings, I don't wanna leave those out if I'm not here just because a strong wind can come up and they will retract, but I just, I only put those out if I'm around the camp, um, but I will leave my window awnings um, out just because they've got that three point connection. Say a strong wind comes up, shakes the awning. It's gotta be pretty strong. It's gonna automatically retract back into the coach. Another new standard for Aspire is the slide out tray. So I love that they give you one standard. Just 
pull that out. Makes it so much easier to get things in and out, especially if you have like a heavy tool chest or something like that. Now, a lot of people are wondering what kind of storage space they have when they've got the, the pull through tray or the pass through tray. So I measured from the bottom of the tray to the top of the chassis rail, rails. And you have about, just about 17 inches. Um, in the other compartments, you're gonna have 20 and the entrance, uh, I'll, I'll show you in a second the door. But you're gonna have about 17. Now you're gonna have more height on either end, but to pass through that chassis rail, you've got 17 inches in the center. This is for your central vac. And then if you'll just peek down here with me, and right to the side is the slide out motor for the slide just above us. The quick connect here and two one ten outlets. So if you wanna, you know, blow up the basketball for the kids or if you need to air up your tires, you can actually do that from your diesel engine. Go to my RVing 101 series and watch part two, Hitting the Road. I go through and tell you exactly what you need and how you can do that with your diesel engine. We've got the lit cargo bays. You can turn those on and off at the door from your Vega Touch and on your phone with the app. So then in our next compartment, this is a pass-through uh, storage compartment as well, but it has no tray. So again, I wanted to let you know uh, that this is about 23 inches, your clearance here. And then inside at the chassis rails, you have 20 inches between the bottom of this compartment in the very center at the chassis rail to the top of the, or to the bottom of the chassis rail. In here, we just have lots of space. Integra's given us some extra tiles if we ever need them. Hopefully, we never will. In here, we also have our Wi-Fi extender and our satellite splitter. So this is one of our smaller compartments, but it has a lot of important things in it. So first of all, behind this area here is where your battery, your house batteries are. You get standard two L16 AGM batteries. So really they're maintenance free. We optioned in the two extra batteries. So this will come with four uh, L16 AGM batteries. Behind this panel here, we've got our backup system for our slide rooms. For some reason, if the Vega touch isn't working, if the controls at the door aren't working, you could get a uh, paper clip and open it up, and then you just stick it in there and get the slide rooms to retract. This is where our house and chassis batteries come together. This is the circuit for the solar panels, another optional item that you can get on this bar that we've added to this coach. And then we've got our fuse panel here for inside the coach. And we also have a house battery disconnect right here. So you can turn off those house batteries when you walk in and out of the coach right at the door. But if for some reason that's not working, this is a backup for you as well. You also have a heated basement in this fire and you can control that from the Vega Touch inside the coach. And then we've got our two 110 outlets, our central vac. I love that you have a port here. So not only can you use this inside the coach, but you can use this to clean out your baggage area and you can pull the car up next door and vacuum that out too. Super nice. And right up between the chassis rails, we've got our 3000 watt pure sign inverter. Integra puts it up there for a reason. First of all, we can't pack too much stuff around it. I know I would be guilty of doing that. So they just put it up in between the chassis rails and it's out of your way and does its job. One of the things that helps contribute to Integra being the quietest riding, best handling coach on the market today, period, is the X bracing. So they reinforce their chassis with this X bracing that goes both vertically and horizontally. And what it does is basically it takes any flexing that you get from the road and while you're traveling and it dissipates that before it gets to the house. So if we're not lucky enough to have you as one of our storage customers at National Indoor RV Centers where you're always plugged into 50 amp service and you're storing your coach somewhere else where you're not plugged into 50 amp service at all times, you need to make sure that you cut off all power to your batteries uh, when you go to store your coach so that you don't have any kind of parasitic draw. So this is where you would cut off the power to your inverter, your leveling jacks, your house power, your battery link, 
and your generator and fender compartment. Say that you're trying to level your coach and it's not working. And you come out here and you see that this little breaker basically has popped. All you have to do is just push that back in to reset that. Now go try your jacks again. All right, in our last compartment here, we have our freshwater tank. So this is kind of the back side of our freshwater tank. I do like that Integra gives you a little window here so you can visibly see how full that is. This is also where you would fill your freshwater tank if say you were dry camping and you weren't hooked up to city water and you had to fill it manually, you would do that right here. It's also where you would disinfect um, or sanitize your freshwater tank. You would put those chemicals in right there. Now, this is kind of a carpet lined here. I've seen a lot of my customers take a Velcro and they'll hang extension cords, rope, um, a small hose, and they can put that, hang it right on the side of that. So it's just a, another place that you can store something that's easy to get to. We have another marker light and our rear docking light for the coach. Over here, we've got our little door for our 15 gallon DEF tank. So DEF stands for diesel exhaust fluid and DEF does go bad. It has a shelf life of about a year, maybe a little bit less if you're say in Phoenix in the hot sun, it doesn't like light or heat. So something, if you're going to a campground and you're gonna stay there for you know, a couple months, three months of time, you may not wanna fill your tank right then. Fill it when you get ready to go on your trip. Now to our chassis batteries. So Integra has made them more accessible this year. They're lower, easy to get to the tops of the batteries. This is our power distribution center from Spartan, which is basically the fuses for the back half of the coach. Then we've got our power disconnect for our chassis batteries. Again, when you go to store your coach, if you're not storing where you're plugged into 50 amp service all the time like you are at National Indoor RV Centers, you wanna make sure you cut the kept power, those, turn those off completely. Then we've got our air dryer for our engine. This is needs to be maintained and you need to change that once a year. And then you have your fuel filter for your engine and your secondary fuel filter for your engine. And then my favorite button right here is the power engine door. So you just um, push that and here comes the engine door. You don't have to wrestle with that. I really like it. <laughs> Makes it super easy. And just above this, we've got the vent for our dryer and our final marker light for the passenger side of the coach. All right, now for some guy talk, let's cover what's in the engine here. So first we have our coolant and we have the fill for our coolant. Now you wanna look at this little uh, bulb here and that should be red, fully red. So right now I would probably need to fill my coolant before I went out on a trip. Now I do a checklist for what I do before I do go on any, on any trip. So go check out my RVing 101 series part one and you can um, email me for a copy of that checklist and I go through my whole routine. It's very important that you have a routine or a checklist when you go on a trip. Then we've got the engine oil fill here and our engine dipstick here. We have our, our hydraulic oil for our power steering fluid and for our radiator fan. And if you follow it down right here, we've got our hydraulic oil filter. Then right behind that, we've got the a uh, little thing that makes a swishing sound, shh, 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 when you put your coach into reverse. You can disconnect that right there. I don't recommend it, but that's where that is. Then up here, we've got our transmission fluid fill and uh, dipstick. Here's our engine air cleaner. So the air comes in through the vented area right here at the top of the coach. Looks like it's just decorative, but it actually serves a perfect purpose. So it brings in that air goes to the engine air cleaner and then into the engine. Here's your engine filter minder. So when this goes up to the top, you know that that's time to get your engine serviced. We recommend that you do that once a year anyway, and we can take care of that for you at National Indoor RV Centers. Then we've got our engine block heater here. So if it's a chilly evening or morning, you're ready to take off, you just need to come back here and plug that in right here. So the Aspire has a 15,000 pound hitch, and that means that you're gonna be able to easily tow your Jeep Grand Cherokee, which weighs about 4,700 pounds, 
or I see a lot of Ford F-150s, which weigh, weigh around 4,000 pounds. So you can tow either of those plus a couple jet skis and you're gonna be fine. So we do get the safe haul. Oh, one more note too. On the 38M and the 40P Aspires, your tow hitch is only 10,000 pounds. Just work to the wise there. Then we get the Spartan safe haul uh, air brake line for your tow vehicle and the seven way for the lights for your tow vehicle our receiver, and then of course you've got the nice Aspire going across the bottom of your mud flap. All right, we have our engine exhaust, and it would be a shame for me not to mention the beautiful end cap on the Aspire, the beautiful lighting, the design and the paint work here, and then the Integra backlit, and just above that we have our third 360 camera. All right, on the driver's side of the Aspire, we've got our first marker light. Then we've got our side radiators. So there, there's a couple great things about a side radiator. First of all, we were just at the engine compartment. And you can see that we can get to everything really easily when we have a rear engine side radiator. Another bonus to this is that you are bringing in ambient air. So it's cooler, cleaner air. So that's going to make your fan have to work less hard so it's going to give you more horsepower and it's just better having cleaner air and the way that Integra designs these fins kind of sucks it in nicely for that um, kind of brings it into the radiator then just radiator maintenance you want to make sure that you keep that clean so just occasionally grab the garden hose put your thumb over and just gently squirt that off no power no power hoses here guys so we have our next tab here for our window awning and we've got our first docking light for the driver's side of the coach, marker light. And just below that, we have our favorite, the stinky slinky. <laughs> so I like that it has its own little compartment so that it doesn't get the wet bay all yucky. And so next, obviously, is our wet bay. All right, so down here, we've got our water hose. One of the things that's really nice in the Aspire, we've got that power reel. So we just push the button. Now also, when you're camping, you're gonna wanna make sure you put your hose through the rubber seal here. And that's just gonna be a way to keep out any kind of rodents, critters. We don't want those in our coach. Another hint that one of my customers gave me to keep rodents out of the coach is to put Irish spring bars in your basement compartment. So he had luck with that. You might want to give that a try. So we're just going to reverse that in. This is where you would add your fridge water filter. Then we've got our tank flush valve. That's where we would hook up that hose up there. Our fresh water connection. This is a hookup for city fill and we just turn it for to fill the fresh water tank. We could turn the light on. Now that's a lot easier to see. I should have done that first. With This is where we can turn our macerator on. This is the T-valve for our gray tank and the T-valve for our black tank. Then we've got a little screen here that's gonna tell us the levels of our tanks. Now remember we have a 100 gallon fresh, 62 gallon gray, and 41 gallon black tank. Cargo lights, so we can turn those on and off here. And I, our water pump, we can turn that on and off here. Then we have the filter for our coach, our shower. So this is great. We've been to the beach, we can wash off here. We don't have to drag all that sand and yucky stuff into our coach. And then we've got the little tool here for when we need to change this filter and a place to store it, which is nice. Hot and cold on our shower. Then we've got a spot for um, gloves, I like to wear plastic gloves when I do all this kind of work, paper towels. And then behind here, they've given us something new for 2021. I know you can hardly wait, but it is pretty cool. So we have water shut off valves. So now we can work on the shower. We can work on the mid bathroom. We can turn off water just to that one place and keep water going everywhere else in the coach. So that's a really nice feature. We also have a little plug here. We can rinse this out or if there's water in here, let it go out or we can shut that as well. Now, if you need to do a gravity dump, this is where you would hook up your connector underneath the coach and your hose. And this is your T-bar for that. And we have the SantaCon macerator here. Okay, next we have the exhaust 
for our diesel aqua hot. And as we open this door, we've got our 50 amp shore power cord. Again, we've got this nice seal that Integra gives us so that we don't get anything, any critters in our coach. But the other thing that I love also is they give us the power reel. If you've ever tried to fold up one of those on a cold morning, <laughs> it doesn't even have to be cold. They just get dirty and anyway, it's nice. If you wanna see how I hook up everything in my wet bay and how I hook up my shore power, all that good stuff, go to my RV and 101 series part three and four and you can see that. I usually like to have paper towels in my hand as I bring in uh, the shore power cord and I kind of clean it, clean it off as it goes into the coach just to keep everything nice and clean and tidy. Uh, then we've got our two 110 outlets here and our cable input. Back here we've got our SureGuard RV power protection transfer switch. Now that's uh, protection there at the coach. I think you need extra insurance. So I usually use one at the pole or I'll have one installed at National Indoor RV Centers inside uh, this bay so that I don't have to worry about anyone stealing it at the pole. But anyway, you can never have too much insurance. That's what I say. So just protect your coach. This will work one time, but that's why I just say it's worth the money to buy an another one. Then we've got our 400 series diesel aqua hot. Now this does need to be serviced. These nozzles here are for putting water in and out of the system. A technician at National Indoor RV Centers can do that for you. There's also a nozzle inside here that needs to be serviced once a year. Then we have the fuel oil filter for our aqua hot system. And we've got our aqua hot box back here. That will give us different information. About our aqua hot. All right, let's check out our big storage compartment. Now this is our pass-through storage. On the driver's side of the coach, you can see how big and roomy this space is. We also have our Dirt Devil um, system here. This is where we're actually gonna change those bags out. And then we've got the extra tiles. And if you look right up here, this is where all four cameras come together to give us that bird's eye view at our front dash. We have our pass-through tray here. So again, super easy just to hit that lever and pull out all of our goods. All right, our last storage compartment. On the driver's side, nice big area here. We've got, you can see the slide motor. Behind this panel, we have the control modules for our, our Gerard awnings. Add that to the anthem. All right, our docking light for the front part of the driver's side of the coach. Our last marker light. And then we're gonna go inside here. Now this is the exhaust for our generator, 10,000 watt generator. When I open this, this is gonna move forward. So just something to pay attention to. Um, we can turn a light here. We've got our fuses for the front half of the coach in this fuse box here. And then we've got the T-bar to bring out the generator. And we have the fuel fill for the driver's side of the coach. So we can actually fill this coach from both sides and I can fill it faster than I can fill my Toyota Sequoia. All right, so behind the front cap here, we've got our windshield wiper fluid. And just below that, we have kind of our wussy horn. You know, sounds like the one in your vehicle. You want to use the big air horn, which is on the other side, and I'll point that out in a second. Then we've got our 10,000 watt Onan generator. If you were to trip a breaker inside the coach, have on too many appliances at one time or something, Typically with 10,000 watt generator, you should be more than covered. But if you do, you would flip that breaker right here. And this is where you can start and stop your generator. It's also gonna tell you your generator hours. And just behind here is where you would fill the coolant for your generator. You should service your generator every 150 hours and we can take care of that for you at National Indoor RV Centers. I wouldn't take it anywhere else. All right, so we have the fan and the compressor for our dash AC, and then right back here, we have our air horn. All right, let's talk about a few things before I head inside the coach. First of all, I think I might have shown up, but see this little pretty lit handle? Not only is it pretty, but it's very sturdy too as you're going in and out of the coach. Then Integra's given us this nice little drawer 
I love this. So for muddy shoes, pet leashes, umbrellas, even some tools that you use all the time. It's got a little rubber liner there, so it's not gonna rattle when you're going down the road. I love that you have that just quick and easy to get to right when you walk in the door. Now, another new 2021 addition is on our door here. So now the passenger, you know, when they're traveling, a lot of their view comes through this door window. If you don't wanna look through a screen, you have the four tabs one, two, three, four. You just turn those up, take it out. You can store it in, in your baggage compartment. And then the passenger just gets to look through the beautiful glass for their view. All right, let's go inside and check it out. As I come into the Aspire, I've got this great grab bar right here for safety. We've got our fire extinguisher here that's right by the door. So if I need it outside or inside the coach, I can easily get to that. And then over here, I've got another nice grab bar that I can use when I'm entering or exiting the coach. All right, right inside the door, we've got the main power disconnect. So I can shut off the power to my house batteries right here, coming in or out of the coach, which is nice. Um, then we have the step power button so once you're camping you're all set you don't want your powered step to go in and out every time the door opens so you want to go ahead and hit that so that your step will stay out we've got our step light so that's just going to give us a little light here in the stairwell for safety um, so to make sure that you don't fall or misstep as you come in and out of the coach so moving up to this panel we have our master light switch on and off our cargo light so we can turn on all the cargo lights here. We have our awning, passenger side and driver side, our security light, passenger and driver side, our entry awning, our ceiling entry, or our entry ceiling lights. So basically, whenever you see those arrows, that means that you can dim that light. So if I were to press and hold this button, it would dim the ceiling lights. Then if I press and hold again, it will bring it back to brightness. And then we have the lights for our slide out. So this is underneath your slide rooms. It's lit up at night. It's really nice if you have to get into your baggage areas, it kind of helps you and it just looks great in the campground. And then we have our porch light. So I'm super excited to show you this floor plan. So this is the Aspire 44R. That is the bunkhouse model. So I've never done an Integra bunkhouse model before. So I'm thrilled to show you it and all the features. First of all, there's tons of storage in this floor plan. So I'm just gonna start up here in the cockpit area and then we'll go into the living room. So right here, we've got kind of our control panel area. Now this is the control panel for the um, solar solar panels. So they, that's an optional item on this fire. We went ahead and added it. You can scroll through and see the voltage on your house batteries, 13.3, your chassis batteries, 12.6, and then the temperature outside, and then zero is the power that's coming in from the solar panels. So we're inside our building here in Surprise, Arizona, so we're not gonna have any solar power coming in right now. These are your AC overrides. So if something were to happen with your Vega Touch and you could not get the AC to come on, um, we're in Phoenix right now, it's pretty pleasant, but give it a couple months you absolutely have to have that AC. So this is where you can turn on your AC units and they will stay on. So if you turn them on here, you have to turn them off here. And when you're a Vega Touch and everything's working like it's supposed to be, make sure you keep those off because they will override the system, just what it says. Then we've got a backup for our slides as well. So you can do these sli the slides on your Vega Touch on your phone once you've downloaded the app or you can do them manually right here. This is our over the air antenna. So we just turn that on and then we've got the uh, over the air antenna that we can direct on the ceiling there. This is where we can start and stop the generator. Just one of the places, there's several places, your Vega touch, your iPad and the dash. All right, so we've got storage here. It's a little bit of a different shaped cabinet. If you wanna see what one of my customers did, to make this very usable, you can go to my RVing 101 series, part one. And we've got two uh, available 110 outlets in this cabinet. Then we've got our 32 inch Samsung TV, another cabinet like the one we just were in. And this has four available 110 outlets. 
So this is great for iPads, phones, yeah, you know, your, your AirPods, anything you want to charge while you're going down the road, you can just throw up in here. You've got lots of outlets. And then this is our power control center. So everything in this box is powered by either shore power or your generator. Everything in this box is powered by batteries. So you get the 3000 watt pure sign inverter with the Aspire. Inverters do three things. They invert AC to DC and DC to AC. They charge your batteries as needed and they pass current through. So right now we're plugged into shore power. So they're just passing current through. Here we have a nice, it's our map light technically. So on the dash, you have to have that button push forward for this to work, but it's a map light. It can be a reading light once you've turned your chairs around and you're in the living room. So you can just push that once to turn it off. You get a dim light there, or you get the full reading light there that is directional. You might be wondering what this is right here. So this is your thermistor. So you'll have a couple of them throughout the coach. That is what speaks to the thermostat so you can maintain a pleasant um, temperature inside your coach. So now I get to show you more of the cool features of this 44R floor plan. First of all, I've turned around my captain and my co-captain's chairs. So this is nice. Your TV is gonna be over here on a TV lift. So if I want to just sit back and, and relax, let me find the right button here and kick my feet up. This is a great seat. So we can get three on our sofa comfortably, two here, and then our booth will seat four really comfortably. You might even be able to get six there. So you have seating for a lot of people here in your living room. You have seat belts in your living room for five people. So you've got three in your sofa, one in your forward facing booth and one in your rear facing booth. And then when you turn your captain's, captain's co-captain's chairs around, you'll have a total of seven seat belts in this unit. Now I want to show you this booth because this is pretty unique to the 44R floor plan. I don't have, um, I just have it set up for two. This is how you'll have it when you bring your slide rooms in so that you still have a path through your coach. But obviously, if you've got a bunkhouse coach, you want to seat more than two people at your booth. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to expand the booth here. So you just lift this lever here, and then you're going to pull it out. The cushion for the bottom comes out, just tucks in there nicely. There's a little hook on the end, and you can grab it by this uh, cord here. And then you just set it on your cushion in. All right, let's extend the table as well. So you can pull it out and then you just pull up from below. And this year they've given us little metal dowels that go right into the table to make that more secure. So you can see that one person here, one person here, and you could get a little person in here. So really comfortably four people can sit at this sit at this booth and possibly six so while i'm here i want to go ahead and show you the tv lift so you just push the button up and here comes your 50 inch samsung tv and you've got your samsung sound bar and then right behind me here with the tv lift i've got two 110 outlets and two usb outlets Lots of storage in this cabinet here with a, an adjustable shelf. So that makes it very usable. And we have storage underneath the table. All right, I've extended the booth on this side so you can see how big it is when both sides are extended. Then we've got another storage cabinet here, again with an adjustable shelf so you can customize that to your needs. And then I don't think there's a bigger pantry out there in any floor plan. So check out this pantry. So huge, right? You've got an adjustable shelf, another adjustable shelf, so you can really customize that space if you need. If you've got big pots and pans or Instapot, coffee pot, 
you're gonna have plenty of room for it in here. Now we also have kind of our AV cabinet here. So we have our matrix box. So you can go ahead and decide what you're watching on each TV, your DV, your satellite, your X site, which is basically what's up on the dash. I'll show you that in a little bit or your um, auxiliary input. And then you've got your main TV, bedroom, exterior TV, and your overhead front TV. And you have your Sony Blu-ray player. You have your Traveler's HD satellite, which now comes standard in the Aspire. You also have your HDMI input, and you've got the input if you want to add receiver boxes there in the back. And then we have our subwoofer down below. Now when I shut these cabinet doors, I just want you to look at that beautiful woodwork. Isn't that wonderful? I think this spire is so pretty. I love the sleek lines and the cabinetry. This is the stonewall gray wood with the cobblestone interior. I love the leather color. I love the wall color and the floor is just gorgeous. Porcelain tile floor in this spire. So I'm impressed with the 44 R, R floor plan because you still have so much room. Here you have a full sofa, ottomans, big booth and your chairs and there's still plenty of walk space. Now in our ottomans, we have storage, which is really nice. And you can just, um, when you're going down the road, you can just tuck those underneath the booth or at least one of them. And then the other on top of the, the either the sofa or the booth itself. Because I'm moving these so that I can kind of demo the couch here. Super comfortable. We have the villa furniture in the Aspire and it's very nice soft ultra leather and we've got our extra bed under here so i'm going to go ahead and show you how that how easy that is to set up so then we just lift it up pull it out easy as that then all we have to do you can see the seat belts are you can push those back in when you're not using those and then you just plug it in hit inflate when it's fully inflated you just hit stop and look at that nice big queen size bed. You also can, there is a walkway past the bed and the booth to where you can get outside if you need to. You know, if you've got a pet you've got to take out to um, go to the bathroom, you can easily get by that bed. Then when you're all done in the morning, just hit deflate. Once it's fully deflated, just hit the stop button, unplug it. There's a little pocket for your cords to tuck into and then you just put that away as easily as you put it up. Now you're not going to find yourself short on 110 outlets in this Aspire. So you've got two here, two to the other side of the sofa or the valance. And then let's check out the space you have above your sofa. I really love how they don't give you a divider in those cabinets, so it really makes that space very usable. All right, you're gonna love the kitchen of the 44R. First of all, we have extra counter space. We always love that, right? And then check out those full length drawers. Lots of storage there. Love the beautiful solid surface countertops. And then let's check out the storage above here. So nice big cabinet here. Now above the convection microwave oven, we have a little storage compartment that is for the cover for our induction cooktop. So if you wanna protect that or if you wanna use that as prep space, you can just put that right over the top. Love that they have a little spot for it. Now, what are the new things for 2021? I know you all have been waiting for this. It's a kitchen window. So first of all, notice the beautiful backsplash. I love the backsplash that they live in, use in the Aspire. And then the kitchen window, super easy. You just squeeze this together. 
So we've got the screen area here. Then if we want to open that up, now you can reach stuff out to someone if they're super tall. <laughs> or you can just get extra flow of fresh air. So I love that option. That's been very popular. Now while I've got you down here, let's check out the outlets. Two more 110 and two USB outlets. And then two more 110 outlets here. So you have a great spot here for the coffee pot. You can just leave your coffee pot in its place. Again, if you check out my RV and 101 video, I talk about the uh, Flora Life Sure Stick that I use and how that you can put it on the bottom of your coffee pot and leave it there while you're traveling. So it's great. Go check that out. Then we've got the great stainless steel one bowl sink for 2021 residential faucets gorgeous big cabinet above the sink love the pull out shelf again i'm going to be able to get to the very back of my cabinet with this pull out shelf and then we've got our flip open there and space for our garbage for our sink covers we can just tuck those right in And then new for 2021, we have the stainless steel front Fisher Paco dishwasher. So you've got the stainless steel front and then you have all your controls on the front panel so you can see what mode it's in. It's a nice big dishwasher. And then right above that, love this drawer. Now I've got all the insides of my convection microwave oven in here because sometimes they tend to rattle when you go down the road. So I usually find a place to put them. I'll probably have utensils and stuff in here once I actually pack my coach and find another spot for them. Now, just around the corner here, I've got another flip drawer and another cabinet. Now, this is one of the features that I just love. I kind of have to laugh that it's the uh, 44R that gives us the place for our wine glasses and our wine cooler so apparently you need this even more if you're taking extra guests <laughs> so a little wine cooler um, love this so this can kind of be your little mini bar two 110 outlets beautiful backsplash and then i just love the way this cabinet looks with the reeded glass in there adjustable shelves now we're not done there's still more storage in the kitchen so we have another pantry Pantry with pull-out shelves. So these lock into place. Just push them. And again, we can get easily to the very back of that cabinet that otherwise would be kind of useless if we didn't have the pull-out shelf. So I just love those. And then we have our big Whirlpool refrigerator with our Diet Coke, of course. <laughs> um, but this is just as big as my refrigerator at home. Maybe it might even be a little bit bigger. And freezer. One thing that you always want to do is make sure you lock your freezer and your refrigerator before you travel. So Integra makes that super easy. Just needs to be on the checklist so that you don't forget it. In my RVN 101 series, I have my own checklist. If you want a copy, you can email me at angie at nirvc.com. Love to share that with you. All right, so I know everyone's getting excited to go down the hallway here, but before we do that, we've got two 110 outlets here. We've got our clock. We have our fire or smoke alarm here. And then down below here, we have our dustpan. So you just sweep everything over and suck it away. And then we have our carbon monoxide detector. All right, now the moment you've all been waiting for, the bunk rooms. So we've got these beautiful doors that just seal that off nicely. And then they fold open and just go flush against the wall there. So you still have a nice walkway while the doors are open. We've got two great size bunk beds. In fact, I'll get you the dimensions in just a second. And then We've got the ladder, and I'm gonna take you over here. We've got TV, individual TVs for each bed. And we've got lights for each bed. We also have a little roll top area here 
so they can have a place for their own toys, Legos, and there's two 110 outlets in each location. So if they want to charge um, iPads, cell phones, all that good stuff, they can do that. And then both TVs are connected to the Blu-ray player in the master bedroom. The beds are 80 by 26, and this top bunk here, here will support 300 pounds, or up to 300 pounds. Now, just to give you a frame of reference, I don't know that this would be my first place I'd pick to sleep, but I would, could comfortably sleep here. So you can see that a full-size adult can fit in the bunk room. So this is 80 by 26. And I'm five six, so I easily fit. So you're gonna, your kids are gonna be fine unless they're super tall. So you've got the ladder that you can move to wherever it's easiest for the kids to get up. You can also just take it out and remove it all together. Now, you also get two privacy drapes. So they're just in this little envelope here. I haven't hooked them up yet, but one goes all the way across the top here and all the way across the bottom. Now, let's say, let's think about other uses for the bunkhouse. So obviously it's gonna sleep extra people, but I have lots of customers that use these for pets. They put crates up here and they have their pets. And then the other usage for this area is to make it a wardrobe. Once you don't need um, the bunks or you can use this as storage or you can use it as a big wardrobe. So if you wanna do that, you've got a key you have to put the key in and turn it on for this to go up and down so it's not something the kids can play with. You have control of the key. Once the key is in and on, all right, so now check out under here. You've got this huge wardrobe and underneath the bottom bunk, We've got some extra storage. Great place for the Legos, right, Mom? <laughs> or the toys. This is just great. You can kind of see that extra storage a little bit better now that I've got this up. And we've got the two 24-inch TVs. I'm not sure if I mentioned the size of the TVs in the bunk room. You also have little storage compartments for each bunk room. So a little bit here, here, and here. So three shelves. And then you can have access to the back of that TV. And the same thing below three shelves and access to the TV. Once you're using it for storage, you can remove the mattress and you've got a nice floor to your big closet. All right, so here's the main bathroom for the 44R. Since we have the bunk beds, we don't want our guests or our kids to have to go all the way through the coach to get to the shower. So it's a midship um, main bath here. Now we have the max air vent controls here and the ceiling lights and accent lights, our towel bar. Then we have a nice big medicine cabinet here. Here we have our control panel for our 12 volt resettable breakers. Nice big window and I, I don't know that I've mentioned it yet, but all the shades in this fire are manual. So you have manual day and night shades. Then we've got nice counter space here with the integrated sink, residential faucets, one tin outlet, the controls for the toilet here, eco, normal, and empty. And we've got our flip down um, cabinet here, big storage cabinet there. All right, before I go in the shower, I wanna point out this great towel bar and you know it helps you open the door. Plus you've got a spot for your towels here. So you can see, I'm in here with heels and I can't touch the top of that skylight. So there's lots of room in here. I love that we have the stationary um, shower head and then the handheld device. And then this is another new thing for 2021. And remember, we've got lots of news for the Aspire. So this is the Aquaview Shower Miser. So how this works, I just always like to turn these away in case they decide to turn on on me. <laughs> You turn this knob down, and then you'll turn your water on. So no water is going to come out because it's gonna recirculate back into the freshwater tank while it gets warmed up. 
So a couple reasons why this is great. First of all, you're not, say you're not hooked up to city water, you're not using your um, fresh water, you know, just to warm up the water. You're not wasting that water. And then you're not unnecessarily filling your gray tank. So your gray tank is always the first thing to get full and the reason you have to go jump, dump, at least that is the problem that I have. So I love it for those two reasons. So it's gonna recirculate when the water is warm, this little blue light's gonna light up and then you're gonna turn this around and you're gonna have hot water. Now just word to the wise, <laughs> the first little bit of water Basically, the water that's in the line is not being recirculated. So that just first little spurt is going to be cold and then everything's going to be warm. So just watch out for the first little spurt. But you're going to love this shower. Love that we have the fold down seat. So that even gives you more room or it gives you a nice place to shave your legs, wash the kids, the pets, whatever. All right. So now for the fun stuff, we're going to go over the Vega touch panel. I'm going to go over it pretty detailed, but really the best way to get comfortable with this is just to use it, play with it, and it will become second nature. It really is easy to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start with the home here. So here's our home page. So we've got our master on and off light switch and our exterior light switch. Then we've got our kitchen fan. So we can control everything from the kitchen fan, low, medium, high, open, shut, power on, exhaust or intake. Then it's just gonna give, it give us a reading for our um, house and chassis batteries our ACs, front temperature, mid and rear, our aqua hot burner, our aqua hot electric, and then we can start and stop our generator from here. It's gonna give us our generator hours, our fresh gray and black tank levels, water pump, we can lock and unlock the entry door from here, and then this is gonna give us our um, leg one and leg two of our power amperage that's coming into the coach. So. Next button here. So this is sort of the pathway of our like of the power coming into the coach. So right now we're connected to shore power, and then we have line one, which is 50 amps of service, line two, which is 50 amps of service. So we have a hundred amps of power coming into the coach. It's going to go through the transfer switch to the breaker box, through the inverter, to our house batteries. Now this is our generator start and stop again, and then our um, auto gen start. Now, if we want to go ahead and set that up, we're going to go to that page right here. So auto gen start is triggered by either low volts or our HVAC system. So when would you have low volts? Um, basically, let's take a great example, something that I love to do. Has any, have any of you ever been to Canton's flea market? You can get carried away. You might plan to just go for an hour or two. Pretty soon you've spent the whole day there. So say you've left your coach you, your batteries start to go below 12 volts if you've got your auto gen start on it's going to go ahead and turn it on and it's going to charge your battery until it gets to 13.5 once it gets to 13.5 it's going to keep charging for an additional 120 minutes to just top your batteries off now it can also be triggered by your hvac system so again, let's go back to our Canton example. <laughs> you leave Fido in the coach and you don't want, it starts to get hot, it's hot in Texas. Um, so you've set your auto gen start to come on anytime the coach drops below or goes above 70 degrees. You want that generator to come on and your ACs to come on. So that, that will do that for you if you've got your auto gen start on. You can also set your quiet time, so you don't want your generator come on in the evening at night when you're in the campground. Your neighbors won't be very happy. So quiet time starts at 10 p.m. and stops at 8 a.m. And then this is the uh, inverter and charter, charger settings page. All right, so then we have our main lights button here. So this is gonna be our exterior master, light master for inside, and then the panel lights on and off. Our exterior lights, so they're all right here. Awning, awning porch, security driver's side, security passenger side, security motion under the slide and cargo. So pretty much the same thing that you saw that you can put on, um, that was on my phone from the app. Then we've got our main lights here. Now, anytime you see those arrows, those lights are dimmable. So you can turn them on and then if you turn them on and hold them, they're going to dim 
and then you just want to go master light on that will bring it back to full brightness and then we've got the rear lights our bed ceiling bed overhead bed accent vanity ceiling accent and courtesy lights so it's very self-explanatory and easy to use then we've got our temperature settings so this is going to give us our front mid and rear we can change that setting really easily right there and then we just hit the button to turn the cool on, the heat pump, the aqua hot, or we can just keep it on auto setting here. So again, we can turn on our aqua hot burner here or our aqua hot electric. So this is for your baggage area. So you can set the temperature and you can control that from inside the coach, which is really nice. Then we have our aqua hot burner and our aqua hot electric. So the electric is about 5,000 BTUs. The burner gives you about 50,000 BTUs. So you want to turn on the aqua hot. If you just are washing your hands, just turn that on. I typically tell people to leave that, turn it on and leave it on. Now your aqua hot burner is when you need extra um, heat or power. So if I'm going to take a shower, I'm going to turn my aqua hot burner on. I'll have them both on. Um, so that's how I use that. Then you've got your floor heat here. So 73, it's pretty warm right now, but you can go ahead and turn that on and warm up the floors if you'd like and set the temperature to what you'd like it to be at. All right, so here we have our slides and awnings. This is just a warning to make sure things are out of the way. Kids, pets, um, the captain and co-captain's chairs, you always wanna make sure they are not gonna hit the slides when it, come in, when it comes in. All right, so I love this because they make it really easy. It's color-coded for you. So the kitchen slide here, the super slide is orange. The bed slide is kind of this tealy color and the vanity slide is red. So you can extend and retract those sli slides as needed. Then your awning to color coded too. So your door awning is green, your front awning is turquoise and your rear awning is purple. Then we've got our settings page. So we've got our network diagnostic, our aqua hot diagnostics. You can change the screen brightness here so just customize that screen. You can go to cleaning mode. When you do that, you can wipe off your screen and you won't um, push any of the buttons during that time. And then you can set you know, Fahrenheit or Celsius. This is gonna get the floor plan and this is where you connect your phone to the mobile app. All right, before we go into the master bedroom, I wanna point out our second thermistor for the coach and another one down below and then the connection for our central back. And we have a nice solid privacy door and full length mirror when the door is shut. Solid door, when we push that in, it locks into place with secure air locks. That it also contributes to the quietest riding, best handling coach on the market today period. When you put the coach in drive, it's gonna lock that into place so it's not gonna be jiggling while you're going down the road. All right, finally to the beautiful master bedroom of the 44R. So look at this nice big king size bed. We've got a nightstand on both sides of the bed and underneath that nightstand, you've got two 110 outlets and two USB charging ports. You also have a little cabinet there to store some items. Now, I love the headboard that you get with this spire. I think it's beautiful. And then check out the, all the overhead cabinet space again no divider so you've got space i like to use that space for winter or summer clothes the off-season clothes you can get big um, plastic tubs and put them in there and then you're able to access that fairly easily because those are really deep um, cabinets so we've got the reading lights you can they're directional and then you can just push button to turn them brighter dim or off we also have the control for the fan and we can lock and unlock the front door from underneath the bed there as well. So how many times do you lay in bed and wonder if you did that? You can double check yourself right there. Now let me show you the storage that we have underneath the master bed. So lots of storage there and it's super easy to get to. You can lift that bed with one hand and push it down with one hand. So look at all the storage you get here. We have our 32 inch Samsung TV with our JBL sound bar. We've got our safe 
Then up above here in this cabinet is the splitter that's directing uh, the DVD player to the two bunk TVs. And then we've got our Sony Blu-ray DVD player. We also have our HDMI input and then we have our input for our satellite receivers. So above the cabinet here we have two 110 outlets. Then we have the nice solid surface countertop and three nicely sized drawers. Four more over here. And we're not done yet because we have two big cabinets up above. And we have our emergency egress window as well. So we have a touch panel for our lights as well as along with our Vega touch. So we have the bedroom ceiling lights, the courtesy lights, the bed overhead lights, the bedroom accent lights, bedroom vanity. So our motion, this is how we initiate the motion censored lights on the passenger and si driver side of the coach. So we just push and hold that button's on. Now they are set and we can take them off that easily. And then we have our master light on and off. Notice the beautiful mirror that they've given us in the Aspire. And then we've got our thermistor for the rear part of the coach. And then you're probably wondering what that is. That's our glass brake sensor. And you might've wondered also why I have my keys in the bedroom. <laughs> so let me explain that a little bit. The glass brake sensor is a security um, alarm for the coach. You have one here in the bedroom and then you have one up in the front of the coach just behind the co-pilot's um, console. You'll see the sim a similar dot like this. So what that does is when you are, um, when you've set your alarm, so when you lock your coach with your key fob or when you lock it on the um, keyless pad outside with just hitting the one and holding it, then you've armed your coach. So even though I can lock my um, doors and unlock them right here underneath the bed, I like to do it from the key fob because it arms the coach. Also, if I hear something outside, I can throw on those docking lights and that may scare someone away or illuminate the coach so I can look on my 360 camera and see what's outside. So a couple reasons I keep the extra key fob in the bedroom. Now you probably wonder how the glass brake sensor works. So once the alarm's been activated, if anyone were to bang on the windows loudly or break them anywhere in the coach, those would go off. Now there's also an adjustment to the sensitivity of that of the sensor. Um, a lot of our RVers have dogs and occasionally the smaller dogs have a really high pitched bark and that has occasionally caused the alarm to go off. So typically right behind the cabinet, right behind the sensor, you can open up and you can see the sensor. It's really easy in this floor plan. So it's gonna vary per floor, floor plan. And in the front console area, it's actually gonna be, you take out the cup holder, unscrew that, and you'll see the sensor in there. So that's how you can adjust that sensitivity um, if needed. So now we're to the half bath because we don't have the shower in here. I'm gonna call it the half bath, but it really is a nice size. We have great big medicine cabinet here. I love that we've got the towel ring. Beautiful backsplash again. Two 110 outlets and the two USB outlets. We have the ceiling and accent light here. A lot of counter space with the integrated sink. We've got the flip top drawers. And then the nice long drawer here. Three of those. A lot of space there and then three more drawers. We also have a place to hang a towel here, which I can't have enough of those. And then we've got our wardrobe. And the light automatically comes on when I open that door, so I love that. And then just next to the wardrobe, we've got our Whirlpool washer and dryer. And then we've got our toilet with our push button controls for eco, normal, and empty, and the controls for our Air Max fan. Then we have this nice window for extra ventilation. One of the things that I always like to show is what the coach looks like when the slides are retracted. So I can easily get to the master bedroom and sleep on it. 
I can easily get into the bunk rooms and the bathroom. Lots of room here in the kitchen. I can fully extend those pantry shelves and get into the refrigerator and freezer. Again, full access to the pantry. Make dinner, breakfast, lunch. Sit down with the kids. Enjoy the sofa. All the way up to the captain's chairs. The captain and co-captain's chairs are made by Villa Furniture and they are super comfortable. We also have the powered chair. So we can move it forward and backwards and down and up uh, like a tilt, tilt forward, tilt back. Then this is going to allow us to move our backrest up and back. Now there's a lever that looks just like this on the other side of the chair that when you lift it up, you're gonna be able to rotate the chair around into the living room. Then we've got our footrest control. Again, this isn't gonna work in this position, but it will in the living room. And then I have the lumbar support here. So here to my left, First of all, I've got a spot for my cell phone, and just beyond that, I have the two 110 outlets. Then up here, I have the tag dump, auto, off and hold. You're just gonna always keep your tag dump in auto. The only time you would ever have to really use it is if you were stuck in mud, needed some extra traction. Now our battery boost button, that's super important. So say you're at the Perry FMCA show and you leave your coach all day, you're not plugged in, you're dry camping, you come back and you can't start your coach. So what you wanna do is push the battery boost button to tie your house and your chassis batteries together in hopes of giving you enough power that you can then start your generator, let your generator run for a little bit, and then go ahead and crank your engine and you should be good to go. You have your battery disconnect button here and it's got the pet safe um, cover on it. So a lot of us travel with our pets or with kids, grandkids. We don't want them to be over here and accidentally push that button and hit our bath house batteries off. Then we've got the controls. So this is new for 2021. Our controls for our steering column, telescoping and tilt and the pedal slide. Then we have our air horn button. Now I always want to have my air horn on when I'm driving something that's this big and this heavy. So once you have that on, you're gonna have that horn. If you don't have it on, it's gonna be more like the horn that you have in your vehicle. Then we've got our auxiliary brake. So that's your engine exhaust brake and you've got a high, low and off. So I typically like to keep that on high. Again, I just want that extra brake, braking power when I go to put on the brakes so I can really stop this coach quickly if I need to. So these are the day and night shades for the windshield. So driver day, driver night, passenger day, passenger night. Then we have our mirror defrost button here. All right, so this little knob, joystick, and button, <laughs> it's gonna allow us to scroll through all the information up here on our dash. And so I'm gonna demonstrate that in just a minute. Now remember the dash, that's super important. So for 2021, the Aspire now has the digital dash. This is huge and you're gonna love this. It just makes it so easy to see and read and operate while you're going down the road. All right, so you're gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and start at settings and press the center button in. Now I can scroll through this so another great new ad for 2021 is we have tire pressure monitoring system for the coach and look how fun this is. So it gives you very detailed information about your PSI, your temperature and each tire. Then we can go down and say, it says towable, connected, no. We're gonna say yes, towable is connected. So then it's gonna ask us what kind of tow type, a single axle trailer? Nope. How about a uh, double axle trailer, triple axle trailer, or our tow vehicle? So I'm gonna keep it there and say yes and exit out. So now 
The next one is our nav zoom. Can, so you can new, zoom your navigation. I'm just gonna keep it level one. Sound volume. So you can determine the alerts on your dash, how loud you want those to be. So we're gonna go ahead and keep them at 60%. And then units. Temperature, oh, speed, let's go with speed. We're gonna keep it in miles. Temperature, we'll keep it in Fahrenheit. And pressure, we'll keep that PSI reading. Go back. Service reminder, so if you wanna set a service reminder to get your engine serviced at 10,000 miles, you can do that here, rather than having the little you know sticker on your windshield. Diagnostics, configuration go back so then we have our trip information so trip two and then we can turn it to get more information about trip two or push the button in the center and get to trip one now if I want to reset a trip I just push and hold all right now we're to our tire pressure monitoring system you can see that it's going to give us PSI and temperature, and then when we turn the knob, we're gonna to get to our tow vehicle, PSI and temperature. So that's really cool. You can actually get a flat on your tow vehicle and not even know it because this coach is just gonna keep pulling it. It's so strong. So that's why it's really important to have that tire pressure monitoring system. Then engine load, there's a few things that we can scroll, scroll through here. And I'm just gonna put it on scan because then it will scroll scroll through them automatically. And then we're back to our brightness. So the coolest thing that you can do with this new digital dash is throw your 360 camera and your navigation right on the screen in front of you and your gauges will just go to this side. To be able to do this, you have to have the coach on, the parking brake release and be in drive. And then all you have to do is just push this little joystick forward and you'll scroll through your gauges, the nav system, and the 360 camera. I like to keep the 360 camera up front because then I just know what's all around the coach all the time that I'm driving. So we have our internal controls for our exterior mirrors here, our lit cup holder for the driver, and then we're gonna go right up here. We have our headlights, marker lights, off fog lights, accent lights or sea lights, docking lights, map lights, and you can put them on off or auto. So we have our equalizer system, which is our hydraulic leveling system. So we just turn on our power. We want to auto level. So you're gonna hear beeping throughout the time that it's leveling. If for some reason it can't level, it will give you a low voltage, or it may tell you that we have an excessive slope, or you it won't level if the ignition is on, or if the um, parking brake has not been engaged. So once all four buttons are lit up and the beeping stops, you know you're level. Right, so we're all level right now. I'm just gonna turn off my power and we're set. Now when I'm ready to leave the campground, I'm gonna turn my power back on. Hit all retract. And do the same thing in reverse. Once the beeping stops, and the lights all go away, I know that my jacks are up. So we have our two USB ports and they've given us a 12 volt receptacle here at the dash, which is wonderful. Now just below that, there is a kind of a green plug or cover. That's where your technician can plug in and communicate with the transmission and the engine. And right below that, you're gonna see a button. All right, so when I push this button, you'll notice that my brake lights come on and the ignition light comes on. So what happens when you need to use that button is say that you've left your coach for a long time, say it's a week or more, and you come back and all the air is out of your system. Well, you have to have air when you depress the brake, which lights up the ignition uh, button to start the coach. If you have no air in the system, you've depleted it all, it's just been sitting for too long, then you need to push that button. It overrides the brake. And 
and you're able to start your engine. So now we can Bluetooth our phone and make phone calls and hang up from the steering column here. We can also turn on our cruise control, set, resume, cancel, and off. Over here are our windshield wipers, so we can turn them on, high or low, and high, or we can set them at our own unique interval. So we can go 1-1000, 2-1000, 1-1000, 2-1000, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, until we turn them off. And our power windshield wiper fluid. All right, so we have some new toggle switches on the steering column. So we've got our volume, and then we've got our mode. So we're in menu, we can toggle through all the different functions available to us. So if I get to radio, And then I can turn on the radio. I can also scan through the channels. And then this is my quick nav button. Just hit it and it will take me to the navigation system. So right under the steering column is our hazard button. So you just pull that out and then push it in to turn it off. All right, we have our Allison transmission. We can easily go to economy mode. If we wanna get the transmission help, we can just hit the plus and the minus together. It's gonna to tell me the oil level. Now we're not driving right now, so it's not gonna give me a valid reading, but it will let me know that my oil life is 99%. Filters are okay. Trans health is okay. There's no codes. And we're back to neutral. Then we obviously have our reverse, neutral, and drive. Now, if we're driving along and we're going up a steep uh, mountain hill, then we may want to shift down gears. So say we're in sixth gear, because this goes all the way to sixth gear, and we go down to fourth, so you can get more RPMs to help you up the mountain. So here we have our parking brake. We have pull to apply and push to release. Then to start the coach, we can, well, there's a couple of things that you can do here. So if you just push it once, you're gonna go into accessory mode. If you wanna go into ignition mode, push and hold. So now we are in ignition mode. If we wanna start it at this point, we're gonna put our foot on the brake and hold it in again. We've got the green light to go. We'll start the coach. Now to turn the coach off, we can simply push and hold the button, but we ha it takes a little bit longer to do it quicker. Put your foot on the brake again and push the button and it will turn off the engine. All right, look at our beautiful new touch screen. We have our radio, media center, XM, Bluetooth, HDMI input, camera. This is where we can see that all the different views that we have available to us with that 360 camera. I prefer to keep it at the 360 camera. Go back to my main menu, I can go to my nav system, and I can throw that up on the screen. It's really nice. Back to the main menu, I can go to Vega Touch. So I have the Vega Touch basic controls up here. So my light control, entry light, interior light master, exterior light master, lock and unlock. I can control the temperature. Now, if I need to turn on the AC while I'm going down the road, I can turn on my generator and then set my house temperature so that my guests in the back of the coach are comfortable. And then I can do turn on my auto gen start here and I can go to night watch. So night watch just gives me a nice 360 bird's eye view of the coach. All right, so we've got the mode control for our heating and AC system, cold and hot and then our fan speed. We have our HDMI input and our USB input. Another 12 volt receptacle here. And we have the JBL premium audio system with five speakers in the cockpit. Just around the corner here, I've got my two 110 outlets. And then I've got my awesome backlit cup holders, place for my keys or my cell phone and a little drawer here 
for all the other odds and ends that I want to carry with me and not have moving around while we're going down the road. Now this might be my favorite spot in the coach. As much as I like driving, it's really nice to kick back and relax. So here in the comfy co-captain's chair, I can just extend my foot rest uh, and sit back and enjoy this motion picture movie view of our beautiful country. From the co-captain's chair, I can always, I can also hit the porch light, my entry light, the panel lights, and the master light on and off. Here to my right side, I've got the controls for my day and nightshade at the windshield, my step slide extend. So once I'm sitting, I'm ready to travel, I'll go ahead and put out that step slide so that I don't fall in the stairwell when I get up. Two USB charging ports, cup holder, spot for my cell phone, and just behind that, I've got the two 110 outlets. All right, I'm so excited to get the Aspire out in the road and let you see how she handles, how quiet she is. Now, just little tips for you that are new drivers to Class A diesels. Nothing to be afraid about. I was a little nervous the first time I was driving them, but honestly, they are a joy to drive. Um, just a couple of hints to remember. Your turning point is the middle of your front axle. So that's actually behind me, kind of the back part of my seat. So you don't start your turn until you're at that point. Hug the left side of the lane that you're in. Those are the things that I heard the most probably thousands of times when I first started driving. Um, but you're gonna see as I take this out, it's a breeze, you're gonna enjoy it. So let's, let's hit the road. So I'm gonna make a left-hand turn. I put on my left blinker and you can see in the camera that I can see down the full length of the left side of the coach, which is really nice. Gives you that extra confidence that you are making a good decision. Then I'm gonna pull out into my lane. Again, I'm not gonna start my turn until right now. And then I can watch those back tires and make sure that was a pretty easy one. <laughs> I'm cheating. <laughs> but really, you can watch everything in those mirrors and you can see when you're going to get in trouble. Slow down and correct and you'll be fine. That's the other thing about driving an RV. There is no rush. So that's when you get in trouble when you decide to go a little bit too fast or in a hurry. Um, maybe don't follow everything on your checklist. Anyway, it's routine, just like a pilot, when he gets ready to fly his plane, he does a whole checklist. You do the same thing on an RV. And I've got my own checklist. Send me an email at Angie at nirvc.com and I'll send that to you. Okay, so right now I've got my 360 camera up on the dash. I can easily say I need to directions. I don't wanna look over here. So I just wanna look straight ahead. Again, I go over to my little dial knob toggle joystick, whatever you want to call it, does all, the, all of those things. And I just hit it up. Just brings my gauges back up big or my nav system. And then I can flip back to my 360 camera. So how easy is that? My eyes never have to leave. And I can just put my hand over here, fill it, and toggle through all that information. Now, you can see I'm kind of really hugging, maybe even going over into that middle lane just a little bit. That's because I've got trees on both sides of um, this road. And you know, those trees can be very expensive. So if you can just really, you know, kind of ease into that other lane, if, it, if there's no traffic or go super slow, you just don't want those to scratch your beautiful paint job because that can be very pricey. But if it does happen, National Indoor RV Center's got your back. We have one of the best, well, I think the best paint and body shop in the country. So bring your baby to us and we'll get her all fixed up. All right, so I'm up to speed. I'm going to set my cruise control right there at 44, speed limit's 45. <laughs> I'm gonna be a good citizen and not even kind of fudge a little bit this time. The cruise control is awesome. It just makes RVs a breeze to drive, just like your cars, but really you've got this huge, beautiful, big, Screen, uh, you know, motion picture screen is what I like to call it in front of you that you can see this beautiful country of ours. Make the country your backyard. Um, that's the beauty of RVing, and it's safe, sanitary, sleep in your own bed, your own pillow. You get it, right? <laughs> 
All right, so one of the things I always like to do when I'm traveling, showing a, an RV, doing a test drive, is to have my decibel reader out. So the Spire is super quiet. There's no rattles or jiggles or wiggles or whatever you want to call it. It's just nice, quiet, enjoyable ride. So my decibel reader is reading at 61.3. That's quieter than a normal car or as quiet as a normal car or a normal conversation. So I can easily be having a conversation with my co-pilot here. No yelling needed. It's just, you know, it's like we're at our home, but we're driving around and getting incredible views while we do it. <laughs> So occasionally you'll be driving along and you realize you've got to make a U-turn. So luckily we are in the Integra Aspire and I know I can make this turn. So I don't have any traffic around me. All right. Cut super tight. I'm not even sweating guys. <laughs> I've done this before in the well in all the integras cornerstone anthem and aspire so i know i can do it so it just that's great too to have that confidence that you can get out of a tight spot if you need to all right so another thing that i kind of touched on is i like to have my engine brake on so right now i have it on high i want all that horsepower pulling me back when i put on my brake especially when i'm driving something this heavy so i've got it on and as you see the next time i come up to a light um, stop sign whatever as soon as I take my foot off the brake you're gonna see the miles per hour start to go down and my foot will not be touching either the gas or the brake so I'm doing it right now we were at 40 I'm at 35 now and it's slowing me right down so slow I need to give it some gas again <laughs> but that engine brake really helps um, I recommend that you just I recommend that you always have it on that's me, personal preference. Now, the Spire does come standard with, with independent front suspension. That's part of the reason that we have such a nice ride and drive to this coach. Um, you really just need to come try it yourself. So National Under RV Centers, we love to have you come out for a test drive. When you're spending this much money, we want you to feel good about what you're buying. We want you to have driven it. Um, we can do custom orders. We can do coaches that we have on the lot. Uh, we are here to make your whole buying experience very pleasurable and fun and you get to join the National Indoor RV Center family. I hope you've enjoyed my walkthrough of the 2021 Integra Aspire 44R. Now I'm sure you're wondering what this wonderful coach would cost you. Well, MSRP is $496,441 and MAP pricing, minimum advertised price, is $372,330. If you want to find out what I can sell you this coach for, please give me a call at 469-277-1120 or visit our website, nirvc.com, and you can see this coach and all the other coaches that we have for sale. Now remember, with our volume and economies of scale, RVs simply cost less at National Indoor RV Centers. We take in trades, we have the best consignment options in the business, we do financing, extended service plans. Basically, we do it all and we make it really easy and it's a pleasurable experience. We want to get you into the RVing lifestyle and get you enjoying this beautiful country of ours. Now, if you've liked this video, please hit the like and subscribe. Also, check out my Retroband video and check out my RVing 101 series. And don't forget our AIM Club, our all-inclusive motorhome club. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.